Um, a few weeks ago, I think it was two weeks ago now, um, I talked about, uh, uh, on a, it was a Saturday night, my friend Lester Summerall Jr., little Lester, now obviously it's not his grandfather, his grandfather passed away a number of years ago, uh, and if you don't know who Lester Summerall is, just Google it, if you don't know who that is. He was one of the greatest men of God that lived in our generation, um, and just a powerful preacher and a powerful minister, and really brought a lot of light and revelation But Lester Leonard, who's the uh, grandson, good friend of mine, we've known each other for a number of years, and he was in Orlando, and he said, hey, I want to come and and have dinner with you. And I was like, cool, let's do it. Let's go to Hash House of Go-Go. I'm going to blow your mind with some unbelievable food. And um, so we just went right up here, and and he goes, man, let's go by your church. And so we went by, and, you know, he looked at the outside, and and we went up there to eat. And as we're sitting there, he goes, hey, I want to, uh, I want to, I really feel like we should go back to your church and pray. I said, let's do it, brother. So we got here, and, uh, and some of you heard me talk about this, but I was standing in the back walking back and forth, and he came up front here, and he began to pray, uh, and he was praying general things that you would pray for other people's church, you know. Oh, Lord, bless Direction Church, and Lord, we pray for people and finances and growth. And then all of a sudden, he stopped right in the middle, and his voice changed. And he went from this nice little praying, blessing, to take an authority over the spirit of Antichrist that reigns in Orlando. And I was like, <laughs> I have not shared anything with him at all. But some of you heard me talk about this area of town. Uh, I Drive really got started because of Vincent Price, the guy that does the, uh, the rap on Thriller at the end of Thriller. He used to host the old monster movies. Um, Vincent Price used to is the guy that put in all the fun houses and things like that those little cheap attractions he's the one that kind of led that charge but the thing about it was is vincent price was really involved in the occult and they used to worship the devil out here in the orange groves and have seances and stuff like that out here and there's a a a stronghold and everybody that started a church down here in this part of town gets out of this part of town as quick as they can and I could start naming churches that if you've been in Orlando long enough, you'd know who I'm talking about. A lot of the bigger churches all started at Dr. Phillips High School in the, in the auditorium there, uh, renting it for the longest time, and then they'd move out to another part of town. And that's why I was kind of shocked when we came here that there wasn't a, a non-denominational or, fil- or, or even a full gospel church down anywhere close to here. I was shocked by that because there's 53,000 residential addresses within a 14-mile radius of this location. Let me say that again, 53,000 residential addresses. That's not businesses, that's residents. So there's people that live down here, come on, that are starving. And so he started coming against that, and I hadn't shared any of that with him. And then, of course, some of you know that this church, this building, used to be a mosque. Before it was us, it was a mosque. And they used to worship Allah in here. And man, all of a sudden, Lester came against that, and then he started, you know, uh, false religions. He started, you know, coming against those things, and I just stood in the back, almost in tears, because I was really shocked at what I was seeing. Because the Lord was speaking to him while he was up here, powerful things. And then while he was while he was talking about that, the Lord said to me, you, "Your church needs to be praying this way. We need to." And now that doesn't mean we need to stop praying for your needs, and it doesn't mean we need to stop praying for, you know, you and things like that. But as a church, we need to be praying that for this church, for this area. Thank you for those four amens. But I said to you that we were going to start some sacrificial prayer meetings between, you know, and we were going to do it real soon. And uh, as I was standing at the door after that, Sister Silvana, who's, you know, she's a prayer warrior. She came up to me. She goes, I've already been praying that way. And uh, she said, don't wait too long before you start those. <laughs> and I said, well, we're, we're not. We're going to get on it. And then Dr. Loretta said, yeah, we should do it between now and Easter. And I said, that's, that's it. That's it. That bear witness with my spirit. So I knew we were going to be out of town last week. And by the way, we had a great time in Hawaii um, at my father-in-law's conference. Man, just exposed to some of the greatest men of God and, and preachers. We, we were in service with Tim Story. And if you don't know who Tim Story is, he's an evangelist in California that does a lot of celebrity ministry. And then Jensen Franklin and John Mason, the author. And we were just, it was amazing. And so um, um, so while we were there, I knew we were going to be there and we weren't going to be able to do a, do a prayer meeting while we were gone. So 
Uh, Wednesday night, I preached in here and, pre and taught on prayer for a little bit. And, and then I said, I'm going to unveil it on Sunday when we're going to do this. Now, I know that some of you are already going to go, well, I can't do that. And I, that's the whole point of a sacrifice, see, is that you, you're willing to lay something else down, you know, come on to do something for the kingdom. Yeah. That's what sacrifice is. How many of you know Abraham didn't want to sacrifice Isaac? It's not like he went skipping up the hill. Yay, I get to go kill my son today. That didn't happen. But he did it because the Lord asked him to. And I'm just asking you, but what I believe is a, is a word from God to come pray with me for 30 minutes, four times between now and Easter. And we're going to use Lester's praying as a template. So when's the first one? Well, I'm going to do it tonight at 6 o'clock. Now, if you go, oh, I can't do it. Okay. If you just absolutely can't do it, I got you. I understand. Pray at home or wherever you're going to be at 6 o'clock. 6 to 6.30 right here. And we're going to do it next Sunday from 6 to 6.30 right here. And the next Sunday, 6 to 6.30 right here. And the next Sunday, 6 to 6.30. And then when Easter gets here, we'll reevaluate, and we may do this on occasion, you know, once a month or something. But I really feel like there's a breakthrough that's supposed to happen for our church that's only going to happen when we pray like this. Because we can go and have all the slickest programs and we can do all the coolest stuff. And we can, but listen, unless the, when I went to church planning boot camp, they said that. You said you need to win the war in the spiritual before your church is ever going to grow. Well, I thought they were talking about spiritually for me. I, I, I know I've got the victory myself. But they were talking about the area of town and the, and the, and the, and the part where your church is going to be planted. And so for 30 minutes tonight, if you can join me at 6 o'clock, and uh, I've already had some people tell me, you know, we don't, we don't live there, but we want to be involved. So can you stream that? So I'm going to stream it, but that stream is not for those you just want to sit at home and be lazy. If you can get out here and pray tonight, get here and pray, 6.30. All right, the group that was here Wednesday night already knows kind of the direction I'm going to go in. Because we started at Wednesday night. So if you can be here tonight at 6.30, and I don't want to hear none of this, well, I just didn't want to come, then shame on you. 6 to 6.30. 6 to 6.30. All right? All right?